Okay, welcome to this video. I'm probably not going to be showing you too many things in this video, guys, but I'm going to just be comparing three different things, right? So I'm going to be comparing Taskmaster MCP with Sequential Thinking MCP and Augmented Code. Now, these three things are currently, in my opinion, the best way to code using AI. I personally use Klein, right? And I've talked about this, um, I'm going to say it again, guys, the holy quadrinity, right? Which is model... AI dev, right? So like cursor, client, whatever, and then context, and then thinking, right? Or you could change thinking with organization, or if you wanted, you could turn it into a triangle where it's model, uh, which AI dev you're using, and then MCPs. Now, I kind of want to compare these three things on a very complicated um, case study that I'm trying to create. Now, I can't show you too much about what I'm actually making because it's a client account and they asked me not to actually show too much. Um, but I am just going to be talking about what I think is the best here. Now, my sequential thinking one is still running. Like as we speak, it's still running. So you might see some of the sequential thinking. There weren't any really prompts in this video or anything like that just because it's a very, very specific prompt for a specific client. Now, let's start with augment code. Augment code is really good. But I'm mainly going to be talking about the negatives in today's video. The negatives are it gets stuck a lot. It loops. When you're almost done, small changes suck. Right? Especially this last one here. When you're almost done, like when you're about to be finished and you just want to change a few more things, it just it just stops working. I'm not going to lie, like it breaks everything. So augment code for me is almost perfect, right? But it wasn't actually managing to complete this task with the required level of detail needed, right? So then I moved on to the Taskmaster MCP. Uh, my choices were Gemini 2.5 Pro, Klein, Context 7 for context, and then Taskmaster MCP for thinking. Now I have to say, this was possibly the most impressive one-shot uh, WordPress website I've ever seen. I'm creating a directory for this client, just so you know. Um, but it did still have a few problems. One thing that I really feel like is missing from all of these things right now is like testing QA. Like as soon as this gets to the point, well, I, I probably already can to be honest with you, and I'm probably going to make an MCP for this. But basically what happens is it writes all this code, it spends $60 and then you test it and it doesn't, it just gives you error messages, right? So that's one problem with um, Taskmaster. Another problem is the cost. It costs a lot because it uses Claude Sonic 3.7 itself, as well as feeding all of the context of each task to every other task and you know, all that good stuff. So the cost really, really starts to add up very quickly. Actually, I'm going to add another one here because I did also test another one, um, which is, of course, uh, Roo Code Boomerang, right? So we'll get onto Roo Code Boomerang in just a sec. But to be honest with you, I would say Taskmaster seems like overkill. Um, and it seems to overcomplicate things, in my opinion. Uh, although it's very, very good, it just seems to be a little bit overkill for a lot of projects, for most projects, to be honest with you, because it's going to try and 100% a project, right? And you might not really want like a billion dollar production ready website. You might just want, you know, something that's 20% ready, looks good that you can get live and then, you know, fix it or move on to the next project and then fix it if it gets traffic. This is quite a common technique for SEOs. They build like 20% of the functionality of the website, like they don't bother with contact forms and all that good stuff. And then it, they don't do any advertising, but if it starts to pop off in Search Console, they visit the website again and they finish the website off. I've done that a few times. Um, it just saves time and you've got more time to iterate. But with task, your time is build a 100% ready uh, product, right? So that's another problem with Taskmaster. So it gets confused. It, sometimes it's too complicated and it costs a lot of money. Now let's talk about Ruko Boomerang. Because everyone always says, oh, why don't you just re use Ruko Boomerang? Now, I have a huge issue with Ruko Boomerang, and I'm going to talk about it right now, okay? Um, it do what it does is there's tasks, right? And then it delegates subtasks, right? And then 
what it does is it feeds, it says, okay, that task is complete, go back to the main task, and then if needs be, generate another subtask, right? Which is fine, but there's a few problems here. Number one is if this main task does not pass vital context from the main task to this subtask, everything will be completely fucked up, right? Everything. So let me give you a great example of this, right? I'm using JSON files, .json files that have been scraped from the internet about data, let's just say about Irish golf courses for now, right? That JSON has a specific object um, template, right? So like, I don't know, name, uh, course, you know, is there a restaurant, whatever, right? If the main task of Boomerang does not pass on the object of that JSON file, this subtask is completely useless and it will not code properly, okay? So you've got to be really, really, really careful with Boomerang tasks because there's no overall context shared between all of these, okay, except like the system prompt maybe. So you could put like everything needs be in the system prompt. The way that I've been getting around this is within the main task, you have to specifically say, do not forget to pass on key points from your research or key points from whatever to the required subtasks. And that works with Gemini 2.5. That will probably work with Claude Sonnet 3.7, but it doesn't work with cheaper models. And that's when you start to get problems. So everyone that's just telling me, oh, you're such a coper, why are you using anything except boomerang tasks? In my experience, this is such a huge downfall of boomerang tasks that it actually makes it not worth using. Now I've tried to build the same website with, with boomerang tasks. If you guys are curious, right now the best stack that I've used, except sequential thinking, which I'm currently testing as I'm speaking and uh, talking to you guys, is Taskmaster MCP with Klein and uh, with Google Gemini 2.5 Pro. So this is kind of like my new benchmark for more complicated systems. It's how well can it take basically a load of data and also a new thing that I've been doing, which I'm going to make a video about probably after this one, which is where you design the website using HTML and CSS on Claude. You feed all of that. How well can it generate a website that is fully functioning, looks good, et cetera, et cetera. So before I end this video, I'm going to see how sequential thinking does. And then I'll end the video with my thoughts on which of these stacks is currently the best. So I can show you what this produces because basically the client said, look, they don't, they don't want an easily repeatable methodology for the website. So there's not going to be any prompts or anything like that in the description. But I will probably show what it's produced. Um, I'll, I'll decide nearer the time, to be honest with you. At the end of the day, you, you might have to just take my word for it and I will give you my genuine opinion on which of these seems the best. Augment code, I really, really liked it at first, but when it comes to slightly more complicated things, it does seem to struggle. Okay, so let's just see how this does here. So we'll activate this plugin, go to themes here, activate this theme. This should give me a way to import. There we go. So we'll drag some of these files over from the scraping, upload and import. Let's see if this actually just works. It did. Food trucks, all food trucks. Okay, so it's these three in the middle. I'm not sure where these other ones are from. It's probably from the last time I built one of these websites. This is what it's built. This is actually, this is good. Um, obviously, I know it doesn't look great, but this is, you can vibe code something much better very, very quickly, right? Okay, so I mean, this is, this is a very, very good result. You can see it's, absolutely nailed the tags and things. It's got all of the information here. This is really, really good. Look at that. Now, again, this might seem weird. I understand why um, this might look really, really weird. But once you're at this point, saying things like make this page look better, and I will show you this now, is so easy. It's ridiculous. So look, this is now the food page, the, the front page. I mean, yeah, bang. This is crazy. This sequential thinking might be the one, guys. Honestly, sequential thinking might just be the one. This is by far the best attempt that I've ever seen. It looks exactly like the HTML CSS that I sent it. And then look, if I just go on an individual truck page here, just to show you guys, let's just refresh this. Bang, do you see how quickly that changed? 
right? Uh, the images aren't being shown, so it doesn't look great. But the menu highlights, detail, I mean, this is so fucking cool, guys. I'm going to leave the video there. Honestly, I genuinely believe sequential thinking is the MCP god right now. And the really cool thing about sequential thinking is you can actually use it to create any MCP that changes how Klein codes that you want, right? So you could have something that every single time before it tries and codes, it calls context, context 7, it reads the documentation, and then it codes, right? Or you can have a QA feedback loop, which I have created. I must admit, it doesn't work as well as sequential thinking, but it's still pretty cool that you can just make one. And then you can literally just say things like, why aren't the images showing? Can you have an image gallery from the images from the uh, JSON? Also make the home page look better with icons, etc. So yeah, you can see it's starting to populate everything. These just need some icons. Th this is like 10 minutes away from being done, to be honest. Okay, so Klein has said that the problem with the images is actually my problem. So the last thing we'll do before we leave is um, we'll import one more food truck. So this one here, import this. Okay, let's try this one instead. There we go, that one uh, uploaded. So we'll go here, so Deckhand Dave's Fish Tacos. Where is he? Come on, Deckhand Dave, there you are. View this, look at that. Jesus, oh my God. There's no way this just one shot me this. Guys, you can find all this information on my channel already. I haven't changed anything. It's just I'm using sequential thinking. Also, if you want to support me, you want to support the channel, definitely check out the school. It'll be the first link in the description of this video. This is absolutely fucking bonkers, guys. There's like, there's like about 20 minutes of vibe coding and saying change this, change that, add a header, add ranked math, and I'm done. I actually only just started coding this before I started making this video with the final idea of me showing you this. And I wasn't actually expecting it to be this good. This is by far the best attempt that I have seen. Thank you for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're a legend. And I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.